Hi, welcome to Intune Training, the place to learn about Intune, the Stephen Adams Show, with Jake and Johannes. You've met Johannes on previous episodes. In fact, the last one, where we took a look at what Autopilot is and what it is not. Today, we're going to be taking a look at the ESP status page, which is what I believe a lot of people confuse as what actually Autopilot is when they're technically separate things. So we'll be taking a look at that today. And excuse the shade. Sorry, we thought we were pretty cool there. But <laughs> nice with that, you, Jake. <laughs> you too, bud. With that, I'll get my screen shared out and we can start taking a look at some things yep. here. There we go. Ooh. Awesome. So the first thing I'm going to pull up is a picture of what the actual ESP status page is. This screen is probably going to look a little familiar for most of you if you've gone through the autopilot process. Again, this is usually what people confuse as autopilot, when in fact it's not. It's the ESP page. And so with the that, ESP is part of the Intune part. So just a, a, a short refresh from the earlier video. You have the autopilot, and then Intune takes over. This is the Intune portion. Absolutely. And with that, we'll actually go over configuring that ESP page because there is a default one, but we're going to actually create a whole new one and go through all the different options. So with that, obviously, you're I'm sure you're very familiar. We're going to go to endpoint.microsoft.com. We're going to head over to devices, head over to Windows, give it a bit to load, lovely Intune, and Windows Enrollment. And from there, we'll go to Enrollment Status Pages. Again, you're going to see a default page that actually loads in here. We're not going to mess with that one today. We're going to go ahead and create a whole new one and go over several of the different options. So we'll give it a nice little name here, Win10 ESP page. It'd be great if I could do my capitalizations correctly. <laughs> we'll hit next right away. But from there, you, the first thing you'll get is a settings page. So we can show app and profile configuration progress. So do you want to actually have that picture that we showed earlier show to your users or devices when they're setting things up? In this particular case, we're going to go ahead and hit yes to that. And you'll notice selecting that whole lot of other options show up here. The first one being we can show an error when an installation takes longer than a specified number of minutes. The default is going to be 60. Like it's going to be the same thing on that default page as well. Generally, I like bumping this up to 90 and 120. I'm sure mm -hmm. you'll honestly feel the same there. Yep. So in this case, we're going to just bump that up to 90. Depending on what you're actually deploying out as required during this stage, it could take longer than 90 minutes. Hopefully you're doing less, you know, following that less is more approach. But every organization is different. Mm -hmm. So with that, you can show a custom uh, message when a time limit er uh, error occurs. Strongly recommend leaving this set to yes and actually putting in some kind of information. It will default, as you'll see. Go ahead. Like the phone to... number or an email address or some means of contacting IT. Because you, when you're using Autopilot, you can't assume that the person who is enrolling their device is actually in the same building as you. They might be on the other side of the planet, and you really don't want them to end up in a stra end up stranded, really. Exactly. And to tag along with that, after adding in like you know whether it's an email, phone number, things like that, mm -hmm. you've got additional options down here that go right in tandem with that. So we're gonna like allow the user to collect logs with installation errors. Now again. I highly recommend setting this to yes. The user might not actually know what's going on, but you as the IT professional, that's going to help you out in a pinch. Um, additionally, we can show only show page to devices provisioned by the out-of-box experience. Recommend leaving this set to the yes option. The last thing you want is for devices that are already pre-existing to have to go through that page again. But again, it's going to vary org to org. So the next section is we can block device use until all app profiles are installed. This is going to default to being on, and you'll notice if I select no, the rest of the menu options disappear. Generally, you're going to want to leave this on. And if you do leave this on, you should keep in mind that this applies to all applications that are deployed as required to the targeted device. So if or you user. have or user, if you have a hundred applications deployed as required, you are going to have a bad time. So keep that in mind. Less is more in this in this instance. Absolutely. 
And by having that on, again, these next three options become available. We can allow the user to reset the device if the installation error occurs. Now this does default to no, I would strongly recommend changing this to yes, simply because again, like Johannes had mentioned earlier, you got someone in a completely different country setting something up and it fails. They're kind of out of luck at that point. There's not much they can do. But with this, they'll be able to at least try to reset it and hopefully get back on the right path. The next one is we can allow users to use the device if installation error occurs. This one is going to default to no personally. I like leaving it at the no option because you're not going to be in that quote unquote managed state, but it's going to vary org to org and you can dictate what. For, exa for example, if the only thing you are deploying are security applications or features, you might, you, you probably don't want the user to be able to use a device that mm -hmm. might not have them. Like it's not in a managed, the properly compliant like locker, big one. Yeah. Exactly. But if you're just installing Office and Chrome, it doesn't matter. Just allow them to continue, make them productive. Exactly. So this next section can get a little confusing. So as an example, you know, earlier we, we said you can't use this device until all required applications are set. This last option will kind of let you override that in a sense. You can block the device use until these required apps are installed. So what that means is once those particular set of apps that you dictate finish installing, you can then use that device. It'll go past the ESP screen and the user will be able to do, you know, do everything that they need and the rest of the applications will install in the background. Now, if we set that to selected, we'll get an option to select apps. Now, there is a little caveat to this though. As an example, let's say we had 40 different applications in our environment that were currently deployed out as required, whether it's to users or devices, doesn't necessarily matter in that fact, in that particular point. But with those 40, maybe, you know, I only really care about, you know, Global Protect here or the Microsoft monitoring agent, things like that. And I select those two. In the back of your mind, you're thinking the way it works is those two apps are going to install and then it's going to let the people bypass ESP and do their thing but it doesn't actually work like that. That list of 40 applications that you have that are set to required, that installation, like which ones are gonna install first is completely random. So you'll run into scenarios where, you know, Global Protect and, you know, the Microsoft monitoring agent might be like the 25th application that gets installed. So you actually had to install all those previous applications, then it got to those, then it finished, and now you're past the ESP page. Again, a little confusing. And you got something on? I, I, again, we would, we both of us would highly suggest and recommend that you keep this short and simple. Don't, if you have 40 applications, don't add all of them in there. Just keep yes. it simple. It's going to make your life so much easier. Again, less is more. Pick a less few applications more. that truly are required. And from there, make them available. The user can install it themselves from company portal. Yep. It makes it easy. But with that, realistically, that's the ESP status page. It's pretty simple. I'm going to hit next here. I'm not going to necessarily add any groups here, but you do have the option of adding in, you know, all users, all devices. That's what defaults to the actual default ESP page that gets selected. And with that in mind, you're probably wondering, well, if I have multiple ESP pages, what takes priority in that particular case. It's not exactly the most clear thing. Um, it wasn't to us at least right away. Mm. Um, and by doing that, you'll notice if I hover over these, the different ESP pages that I have, you'll see there's a priority listed. With that, I can grab and like select and drag things over. Now it doesn't work because I currently have a default and only one other ESP page. But if we created a second ESP page, you would be able to drag and drop and set the priorities on those different things. But, but yeah, again, short and sweet, that's ESP in a nutshell. And keep in mind that having an ESP is entirely optional. You don't actually need one. It's not a hard requirement. Absolutely. With that, thanks for tuning in. Obviously, if you have any questions, comments, concerns, leave them down below. Head over to the Win Admins Discord. We'll see you, both Johannes and myself. Have a great one. Yep. Bye.